I was born in a blizzard. I was only a pound and three quarters. They put me in a roaster and put me on the oven door. I was so small that my father almost sat on me in the bed because they said I could go in a quart kettle. But baby, look at me now. <laughs> is Mabel and I've worked in my shop for 70 years and my customers they're all dying on me but I'm still going strong. I got the sea hot for you. Yeah and I got the crown jewels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well I, my father was a barber and I always wanted to do this and when I was a kid when I went to school I used to take the kids in the library and cut their hair. Their mothers must have loved me. You probably have something on your 95th birthday this, this year, do you think? And you just I always to... say, I'm not going to lie down and die yet. <laughs> I hope not, Nellie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't figure I'm that old. Years ago, I looked old, like a little old lady, you know. Yeah, that's something. right. That's so true. Wrinkled up. And yeah. I got a few wrinkles, but... Yo. I don't let them worry me. Oh, <laughs> we do, we do well for our age. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to work, and I always have. I just hate sitting around doing nothing. Both my father and mother were very, you know, ambitious. My father, he had a pool room and a barber shop. And then they opened this restaurant. I started work at the age of seven. The tips were great, because they thought I was something else again, waiting, this little thing waiting on tables. But then when I got old enough to understand that I didn't like it, I didn't want to do it. So I got a job at the local theater, and that's when I met Doug. And then I told him that I was going to beauty school in Boston, and we had a disagreement. So a few months before I went, we broke up. Because he couldn't see why I had to go away. So then when I came home, we started up again. It wasn't a beauty parlor in Hubbard's, so we decided that we'd open up a shop in our house. Then we got married, and that was in 1946. That's my certificate, yes. I was the first woman in business, and uh, it was very unusual. And this is my book that I got when I went, went to beauty school. There's a picture of the classroom that we had from Wilford Academy. You had to wear a uniform, a white uniform. That was a must, with white shoes. They gave you uh, the basics of, of what you do. You know, you, you wash and you cut the hair and you perm it and you set it. It was mostly curls, a perm with curls. They were a machine and you had to really had this thing, you had a clamp on and it was so tight. And then you turned the heat on and really the bad burns. And then, well, we did facials and manicures and things like that. Well, that was 
was a waiting room out there, and I had chairs and a chest to fill and everything out there. And then all these dryers would be going. I had three other girls. So it was a very busy, busy place. So you're an artist. You're painting very nicely Oh, there. I know it. I know. <laughs> I trained Lola, and uh, she worked for me for 25 years. So now we do one other's hair, and it's nice. I had customers who wanted their hair tinted, dyed, but we didn't call it dyed, no, we called it tinted. It was tinted. Anyway, they didn't want to be in the shop where anybody else was. They wanted to be alone because they didn't want them to see that they were doing it. That wasn't in your that wasn't time. That no. yeah. wasn't new. And then, mind, I used to have men, too. Poor Harvey Singh. Oh, really? Oh, golly, he used to come in every week. And do me? At night. <laughs> but see, I see the younger crowd are going gray quicker, too. I mean... Yeah, but you see now, with the kids running around with Green hair, pink oh, hair. Right. I, maybe I'm crazy to have it done, you know. You would be totally white. Well, you white. know, when I go to the nursing home, I will. Yeah, because I'll have to come over and do it when you go to the nursing home. But. <laughs> then I had one customer. She said, if anything happens to me, Mabel, I want you to make sure my hair is colored. And I You said, did a corpse? Yeah, oh, I never, that was the only one I ever you did. You never, ever told me that. No, that was the only Secrets. one I ever did. The president of, of the Herald and Mail, he said, Mabel, you should write for the paper. And I said, well, I know you can't print. <laughs> it was so true, you know. I mean, people come and tell you their, their uh, troubles and all this kind of stuff. You heard it all. Oh, this feels good to have it washed. Yeah, but you love your hair. Mm. I haven't grown this long for a long time. No. We were married three years before I got pregnant and had my son. I was one of the first women in Hubbard's that worked and had a family. I kept house and I cooked meals, you know. Think now, I wonder how I did it all. A difference in the color already, eh? At one time, Hubbard's was something. It was really very touristy. Americans had summer places. And then, of course, people from Halifax had their cottages out here. It was very busy. All the women want their hair done for the shore club. always went to dance on Saturday night. Everybody went to the dance on Saturday night because you, you dressed. Men had to have a shirt and tie and a jacket, and we women would dress all up. And then there was no license, so the women had big purses that they carried the booze in the purse. Oh, those were the good old days. <laughs> He'll be dead 10 years in February. And we had been married 56 years then. It was a big transition. I mourned, you know, stayed off of work for maybe a week or so. And then I went right back at it and it gave me something to do. I really think it helped me. 
You look pretty today, Mabel. Oh, you so gorgeous. Your... Just adjusted your hair, did you? Yeah, I had it done yesterday, yeah. Nellie was coming a good 50 years, 60 years. Her husband used to bring her, and he'd wait for her while she had her hair done. Okay, now you can hear me. <laughs> and then he passed away, and Nellie didn't come for a little while because she didn't drive. Of course, now she comes with Ruby. That's my husband and my stepson. Yeah. We were teenage sweethearts. You know, there's a lot of widows who don't drive, and that's sad, really. Uh, now, my husband wasn't keen on me driving, and he didn't teach me. See, these, all these people here were friends of mine years ago. I took to myself I was going to drive, and thank God I did. Since I got older, too, I think I go out more. I don't know what I'd do if I wasn't driving. That's my independence. I'm not great. No, I'm not great, dear. I didn't feel like getting up much this morning, but I got up. I forced myself, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I feel better after I'm up. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You had a fall. I fell in the bathtub. In the bathtub. And I wasn't bathing. And I got up off the toilet, bent over, put my pants up, and I went over sideways. Lost my balance. My leg was out over the side of the tub. My head hit the one side of the tub, and it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I was alone, and there was no way of letting anybody know. No, I was sent to the hospital, emergency, and yeah, yeah, no broken bones or anything. Yeah. I had all x-rays, and yeah. I was to the doctors all the time getting tests. Yeah. And I'm still, you know, I mean. Uh, oh, Nellie, you're tough. Well, I guess I have to be when I'm alone. I don't want to go to a nursing home. And... Yeah. Doctor, my family doctor, told me that I couldn't stay alone. I shouldn't be alone during the day. See, I, I had girls stay with me since my husband died 20 years ago. And, uh, but I don't have anybody in the day. She said I wasn't ready for a rest home yet. She said maybe assisted living or something like that where I could make my own and then if I wanted help. I could get help, but I didn't even take that. I'm still alone during the day with this. <laughs> you know, I, I find myself watching myself now when I, when I walk or what have you that I won't fall. And I think it just comes, you know, when you get older that uh, that you think about these things. I thank my lucky stars every day that I'm as well as I am, and my son lives next door. It used to be his grandparents' house, and we always planned that we would move over in that house. Well, then when my husband got sick, we decided we'd give it to Paul. Life goes on. Mail, mail, mail. Oh, thanks, Mom. Oh, yeah, oh, golly, yeah, let's come along nicely. Yeah, any customers today, or? 
Yeah, well, Nellie and Ruby were there. And oh, then really? I had to go pick up Idella down at the manor this morning at nine. Well, now you're, you're on the taxi service too, are you? Yeah, I had a taxi service. I hope you're charging morning. them extra. <laughs> She's still doing it. <laughs> Amazes me. So it's, it worked out very well. If I need him, he's there, really. In fact, I think sometimes I, I couldn't live here unless it was, you know. I am getting older, you know. <laughs> Do you want your perm a little tighter or no, l just, no, just loose? Yeah, okay. that's okay. Sunday's your birthday, right? Yeah, right. So what do you have planned for the birthday? Nothing. Nothing? So you'll have a cake with 90 candles. 90? See, I'm only 89. Joke, joke. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. God. And you're still driving, so there you go. When, that, when I can't drive anymore, that's when I give up. No, don't give up. <laughs> I mean, for being 89, you do a lot of things. Yeah. You don't stop. No, so. you can't. Why don't you stop? You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. had uh, breast cancer twice, a kidney transplant, a hysterectomy, uh, 13 times in the OR. They're working on my head now. That's good. So she wants to style, but in order, without a perm, you're going to look straight all the time. You've got no puffs. Yeah. So. And they it's last it's fairly. It gives me body. Yeah, more body. And you know, I had all the surgeons that I had. They always said it was my attitude. I say. I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna be sick for a few days, but I'm gonna feel so much better after. And I was right. Yeah, thank you very much, That's Mr. Nice. Shirley. Okay, now, where's my mirror? One second, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look good, you feel good. Thank you. And most of my customers are the same way. And after you get your hair done, you feel like good on top. Yeah. 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 Feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty is what you make it, really, I think. Ellie, you're going to live us all. You think? Yeah. Oh, I do forget. I'm well, forgetting. I forget, little. too, and I'm only 77. What? You, you I forget yeah. things, and I'm only 77. <laughs> I keep saying, how long am I ever be able to do oh, this? Merry Christmas. Okay. I can't believe that I am in my 90th year. I really can't. I have no desire to, to retire. And I keep saying to my son, when I can't do it, and I can't stick me at a nursing home. <laughs> so as long as I have customers coming, I'll be working. And I keep telling them I'm going to Hollywood. 